guys and welcome to my latest video I thought I'd do something a bit different this time and sort of give you uh, the reasons for me wanting to draw and starting drawing and uh, a bit on my background uh, I'm basically from England but I live in the Netherlands in Holland I'm 50 years old and I hadn't picked a pencil up since school when I was 16 uh, till the age of 40 and at the age of 40 I did this painting of Heath Ledger as a Joker don't ask me why I did it, I just on a whim I bought some paints and a canvas and I tried my hand and it sold to an art dealer. So me being me, I thought, oh, maybe I could be a painter. I did decided to, you know, that I wanted to be an artist. And you can see these paintings that are flicking by now are not exactly brilliant. Um, they never were going to be because I hadn't had, I've had no training at all in art. This is basically just me being me and just drawing what I see, uh, painting, sorry, at the time, painting what I see. But there was just something missing, something not quite there, and I didn't really know what it was. Um, it wasn't any lack of creativity or anything. I mean, this was a piece that I did for a, a woman that I know, for her son, for his 21st birthday. Nothing brilliant again, but uh, this was a piece that was never finished, uh, based on Paris. This is a painting I did of Barack Obama. Now, I, I obviously knew that I had some talent for painting and I could sort of, if I could nurture it and practice and learn and stick with it, then maybe, you know, I could be quite good at it. But life gets in the way as it does and uh, at the time I'd gone through a lot of stuff, a lot of stress in my life. Um, just after this period, I was about I was about to be diagnosed with a PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, amongst other things. And uh, yeah, so it was very hard to concentrate and stuff. Uh, this was another painting that actually looks quite good now. I'm looking at it, uh, but it was never finished. Uh, this is another Jaga painting, and that's me, ten years ago. Um, this painting is still downstairs in our uh, cupboard. <laughs> it's a, quite a huge painting, as you can see from the picture. But then anyway, I decided that I wanted to draw. So in 2008, I thought, right, I'm going to buy myself some pencils and I'm going to draw. Now these drawings are like so basic and so bad now I look at them, but I'm not going to knock them because this is how I started. Uh, using pretty primitive pencils on A4 printer paper, which is not ideal. Um, and of course I had to dabble with felt tips and stuff as well. I'm a big comics fan and anime fan, manga fan, so you know, I did a I just had a dabble. And basically some of these drawings were taking me twenty minutes, you know, half an hour, an hour at the most. And so I was just churning them out. As you can see, nearly all of these drawings have got January and February two thousand and eight on them. So it was it was basically just a hobby. Uh, I, I, as I said, I've got no training. There was no real, real creativity there. I was just trying. I was just, I was just drawing, basically, just sketching. And a lot of people say that that's what you've got to do to be an artist. You've got, if you want to draw, you've got to draw every single day. We're moving into 2009, by the way, now on the pictures. Uh, but to a certain extent, and in principle, that is right. You do have to draw a lot to get the practice in, obviously. But that's not the be-all and end-all. You, you can draw every day, but if you don't change your practices and you don't learn and look at other people's work and learn new techniques, then you'll just draw the same every day for years and years and you'll never improve. So there are different fundamentals involved, which I'll get to now. This is into 2010 now. Um, this is what like, one of the first serious drawings I did. I thought it was serious at the time of Penelope Cruz. Uh, it didn't take a long time at all, and as you can see, there's no great skill again, and it's on printer paper again. I still hadn't really turned this hobby into something that I really wanted to do. Uh, that's meant to be uh, Wentworth Miller, Michael from Prison Break. That was in uh, Carpix, as was this, uh, manga drawing. But yeah, uh, I really wanted to draw by now, but as you can see, I drew this cat, and it's it was not good at all. Uh, it's all over the place. The shading's wrong. The composition's wrong on them. Uh, this is Culpix again. Nothing's really, really sticking out now. Uh, so I was all over the place, bike basically. I was using pencils, uh, ink, Culpix markers, 
and I, I always go back to the comics and drawing in the end it's a daredevil drawing that I did, not very clear there uh, this is another one in carpet markers but the crux of it, underneath it all in my heart I really wanted to draw, that's uh, Pedro Almodovar, one of my favourite directors and then the next drawing is, uh, why do I forget people's names, but I forgot a name, uh, Singer, yeah. Didn't turn out very well. Um, so we move into 2011 now. And again, uh, with my health and the way things were, I was just churning out drawing after drawing for like two weeks. And then not drawing for three months. And then churning out drawing after drawing again. And then not drawing for three months. So there was never any stability there, I was never learning and I was never really, <clears throat> excuse me, never really doing what my head or my heart wanted me, wanted to do. It was basically just drawing for the sake of it and this is why I say that it's not, ju it's not enough just to draw every day to improve. There will be some improvement of course because you're constantly drawing but you have to hone your techniques, you have to learn new techniques you have to watch other people. As you can see, I'm starting to improve a little bit just from drawing every day. And so now I'm thinking, well, maybe I can do this. And so I've started, I've bought myself a, a pad of paper. I'm not drawing on printer paper anymore. And these are quite big drawings now. These are A3 drawings. That's Ian McKellen. And then I did this one of Reese Witherspoon. I was really pleased at the time with the mouth. I can remember thinking that's the best mouth I've ever drawn. And as you can see in the close up here, it's not too bad, it's obviously not ideal or brilliant, but for me at that time it was great, absolutely great. And now we move into 2012, and as you can see, I didn't draw for about six months again. And I've just gone back to the same old, same old of drawing random stuff, not really knowing what I'm doing or what I'm trying to achieve. And it, it, it's basically still a hot hobby at this point. Uh, that's Locke from Lost, what's supposed to be anyway. Uh, now I thought, come on, let's try and let's try and settle down. And I did this drawing of Michael Jackson. And from that this drawing, I can see that I can get likenesses pretty well. But uh, and the one with Lady Gaga as well. My likenesses are there, but my shading is not very good. Um, I'm not using the right pencils in the right places. This is a Harry Potter drawing that I did. So I got disillusioned again and didn't draw for about, I think it was eight months or something daft like that. Uh, so I, I was just doing these silly little ink drawings. That's actually from 2010, it got mixed in by mistake. But um, I was just, it was just still a hobby. I was just dabbling every now and again and just putting things down onto paper. Um, there was no real direction. And then coming into 2013, I'd just done this uh, Dexter ink. And I was thinking to myself, you know, come on, come on Lee, let's shake this up, let's actually try and do something here. I'm an Arsenal fan by the way, so that's Jack Wilshire for all you Arsenal fans out there. Uh, so yeah, I decided, what, what have I got to do? What I've got to do is slow down. And this is my biggest advice to anybody who wants to draw out there. Slow down, slow down some more, slow down some more, and then just when you think you're going as slow as you can, slow down some more it's all about the detail it's all about your reference photo or your reference subject or even if you're drawing from your head how you're putting it down on the paper what you're seeing being taking your time and doing it slowly it doesn't matter if you spend four hours on a drawing or 30 hours on a drawing it, it, it's it's how you draw that drawing and it's best to like spend 30 hours on a drawing and to have the desired effect and to see the outcome that you want than it is to draw for four hours and get it done just for the sake of it but then not be happy with it at the end. So this is a drawing I did anyway of Michael Fassbender and as I say we're in 2013 now so only five years ago but I'm still not drawing. So I basically did that handful of coloured drawings and then this one drawing in the whole of 2013 and I was a bit disillusioned. I was pleased that I slowed down with this, but it still wasn't where I wanted to be. So now we move into 2014, and I did this small drawing of Planet of the Apes. And I was quite pleased with that, because there was a bit more detail in it, and I was starting to think about light and shade now. It, it's still not brilliant, but uh, it's showing an improvement. And then I'll go a few months again, I think six months without drawing. And then I'll come to this, I tried to do a drawing of Kate Middleton, and it didn't work at all. 
Uh, I mean, I drew the hair a lot better than I had in the past, but the, the shading was not right, the, the, the skin texture was not right. Uh, and then we move on to a drawing of Morgan Freeman that I did in the same year. We're on 2014 now, remember? Um, yeah, and this was a huge drawing. I mean, uh, A2 size, I think. But I wasn't pleased with it. And again, I, I, I just thought, let's slow down. I've put my hand in this photo just to show you the size of my drawings. This is one that I was doing of Robin Williams. And looking back at it now, I wasn't pleased with it at all at the time because I, I, I was desperate to improve. And sometimes when you're desperate to improve, you, you don't really, you know, you, you get impatient. And impatience and art don't go hand in hand. I really wish I'd have carried on with this one though, because I think it would have been the best drawing I'd done at, at the time. So then we move into 2015, and I drew another Emma Watson drawing. Uh, this is one that I did with a quote that she did with a he for she speech for the UN. Uh, I was quite pleased with that starting to show a little improvement again. But then me being me, I thought I'd have a go at pastels and coloured pencils. Uh, the pastels one, it's not bad for a first ever attempt, but it didn't turn out well. That's my first ever coloured pencil drawing. Not good again, but looking back, it's not bad for a first attempt. Neither is this one really. I didn't get the shading right at all. I could not cope with the feathers. I did not know how to do it, but I was pleased with how the eye turned out. And this was an ink drawing I did of Nosferatu, which I'll talk about later because I've done another one in 2017, we can compare them. So, 2016 now, two years ago, and I decided I want to draw. That's what I want to do, I want to take it seriously. This is a drawing of Katie Melia, didn't really work out well. Then I did this one of Walter White from uh, Breaking Bad, Brian Cranston. And I was really pleased with the moustache and the beard on this, and the detail in the face and the eyes. I cocked up the shirt on the right and the background, but I was improving. Then I did another one of Emma Watson, and as you can see, the, the, the hair is not brilliant, but it is an improvement for me at that time, and I like the reflection in the eyes that I got there. So I thought, okay, let's slow down again. Let's slow down. And I slowed down, and I did this Mother Teresa. Again, this is quite a huge drawing, uh, A3 size. And as you can see, the highlight, my highlights, my lighting and the shades, are getting a lot better now when I'm starting to get more detail. We move on to this is uh, Daenerys from Game of Thrones with her dragon, Drogon, Drogo. Always getting mixed up which one. But uh, yeah, um, as you can see again, the details start to get there. But now I wanted to get more serious, so I slowed down even more. Uh, I did this drawing of Muhammad Ali, and I think I've got the skin texture done really well on this, and the highlights are a lot better. As you can see, the hair, the details, I took my time with it. And, you know, I've almost drawn at every curl in there. And at least shaded it in the way it should be to make it look like hair. And then we move on to my next drawing of Mike Tyson. I was really pleased with this, because now I've started to show improvement. Now I'm starting to look at light a bit better. I'm starting to get my detail in there. I'm starting to not be afraid to go darker with the pencils, like in the corners of his mouth and the eyes. And then we move on to 2017, so you're talking a year ago now. And this is a drawing I did of Usain Bolt. Again, the light on the drawing is a lot better. Uh, this is Michonne from The Walking Dead. And I'm starting to get a bit of detail in there, but then I'll get a bit of insecurity creeping again. I did this one of uh, Chester Bennington as a tribute to him when he passed away. And it wasn't quite there. So I went back to my uh, inks for a while and I did this Nosferatu. Uh, if you can remember, uh, I showed you one that I did three years ago, uh, a little earlier in the video. So I'm going to put the two of them together now for a comparison. It's not a huge comparison from 2014 to 17, but you can see the difference. You can see that I've improved. You can see the one on the right from 2017 is a lot neater than the other one. And so now I thought, right, I'm going to slow down again. I'm going to take my time and try and draw properly. And I did this drawing of Michael B. Jordan, and I was really pleased with this one. Because again, as you can see the light on the side of his face, the right hand side of his face, or left as you're looking at it. it I've, I, I managed that quite well. Uh, I've got his hair done quite well, the details are there, and the likeness is there. So then, uh, this is commission I drew uh, for uh, a girl that I know I went to school with, or a woman now, sorry. Uh, this is for her husband. Uh, his father passed away and he wanted me to draw a picture of his father. 
and this is I3 as well, quite big, and he was really, really pleased with it, and in fact it's hanging on the wall in their house, and I was, I was really pleased with the detail on this one. Now, I started, I really wanted to have a go at coloured pencils, so <clears throat> I thought I would have a go, but I thought I'd implement it with my drawing, and I did this one of Lord, and it's, uh, yeah, it didn't turn out I wanted it at all, I rushed it, and this is my first uh, coloured pencil drawing, and uh, I was quite pleased with that, it didn't turn out too bad, and then I moved on to this one, got the shading rung on the face, got the hair rung, uh, I was quite pleased with it, and I thought, I tried to get the detail in, you can see the nose looks quite realistic there, it doesn't look quite so realistic close up, but this is what it looks like close up, it's not bad, you know, you can see that I've taken my time to draw in, it does look good from a distance. I tried to draw this one on uh, brown paper, that I did not like at all, to be honest. Um, I wanted to get some uh, grey tone paper, some Strathmore, which I do, uh, a little after this. This one was the first time I'd used my airbrush for a background, for the sky, and I was quite pleased with that, but again, I hadn't got the skill yet to do the feathers and it didn't quite turn out I wanted. I was, was pleased with the light on it and the eye as well. Uh, this one I did on uh, the brown paper again. Turned out better than my first attempt but still not happy with it. And this is just a, a small sketch that I did of Tyrion from Game of Thrones just, just for a practice. It's, it's not that good, it's not really what I would expect from myself at this time but it was there just for the practice. Uh, this is a coloured pencil one of a parrot that I did. Um, I like the colours, I like the way the background's turned out, it's okay. Uh, I was quite pleased with it. So I thought I'd try coloured pencils on the thing that I like to draw, superheroes. And this is the Incredible Hulk, obviously. It turned out okay, but uh, I messed up on the, the jeans, the, the purple in the jeans and the, the shading. But the, the Hulk himself actually turned out not too bad. Uh, then I did one of Deadpool, and this was okay. I was pleased with the rucksack on the back. I managed to get some good textures in there, some nice light, and uh, I got the colours right. And this is one of the things with uh, coloured pencils. You have to learn your colours, you have to know your colours, because if you don't get them right, it's never going to look right. This is one I tried on brown paper again. It was a, a little better, but not too good, all the same. And this was a Star Wars drawing I did of one of the robots, BB-8. Um, I'm a massive Stephen King fan and one of my favourite books which I read in 1986 when it came out uh, is It and I've read it again since and obviously seen the TV show and the film so yeah this was uh, a sort of mock up, a little DOS that I did. Uh, this is a commission that I did, I went back to Pedsalls and I did this for a guy whose dog had passed away. Uh, I went to school with this guy and he got in touch with me and it was the first time I'd used um, a Lumograph pencil, an 8B, and it turned out really well, I really liked it, and the guy likes it too. Um, so I was quite pleased that it sort of put me in the mood for drawing again. And just before this I did a small coloured drawing, I'd got myself some grey Strathmore, and this was the first time I'd ever used it, and this is the same dog, so I sent him this free with it. And now we move into 2018, uh, and I'm on the grey Strathmore again, and this is a cat that I did in coloured pencil. And you can see now that my detail's getting better. I'm starting to pay more attention. Uh, I'm starting to use a lot more patience in my work. It's still not brilliant yet or where I want to be, but I'm getting there and I'm improving. And this is a dog I did. I like the way I've got the texture in the collar on this one and the, the, the ring on the collar and also his eye and the nose. Uh, I took my time. Uh, still not as much time as I should have, but there you go. You know, I'm, it's still a learning process for me. And as I said, I'm a massive, massive Stephen King fan, and I'm also a Stranger Things fan. So I did a tie-over drawing of Stranger Things uh, versus Pennywise the Clown, and I was really quite pleased with this one. I like the way the lights turned out, I like the way the shadows have turned out under the bikes. Pennywise is not too bad. I could have done a little bit better with the bikes themselves, and there's a few mistakes in there, but I was overall quite pleased with this one, because it shows that I'm improving. Um, I did the next one, uh, Mike Wazowski from uh, Monsters Inc and this was sort of another practice, another test and I sort of rushed this one but the eye turned out okay. 
and this was my first sort of go at realism uh, I did some Maltesers and it didn't turn out too bad actually I know that I can do better but you know it, it wasn't too bad I got some good reactions uh, online for this one uh, this is a, a bird that I did again on the uh, Strathmore grey toned paper I'm using Polychromos, uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and a uh, Caran d'Ache white um, and I'm blending with uh, paint thinner. This is a, a drawing that I did, another commission of a grandfather with his granddaughter taking a selfie and I hadn't drawn for a while so I was really really pleased with how this turned out. I, I really got the likeness in this one and I've done quite well with the shading so I was quite happy with this one and it sort of gave me confidence now to know that I can kick on and move on and if I slow down even more and take my time and concentrate I can really improve at this. Uh, this is another coloured pencil drawings uh, mixed in with Copic markers. This is um, from the Walking Dead game, Telltale's Walking Dead game. This is Clementine. Quite pleased with this one too. And then we move on to the latest drawing for those of you who watch my videos. You'll know this is the last one I did. Also on the grey paper and blended with uh, paint thinner again. Uh, the Polychromos and the Caran d'Ache. This is a little birdie that I did. So. All I'd like to say at the end of this is that I'm going to do some tutorials in the future and hopefully you can all learn with me as I go on my journey with this and I really really want to improve in the next couple of years and hopefully I can and for those of you out there who get disgruntled by people's comments or get downhearted or feel depressed and think that you can't do it do not listen to them the problem lies with them not with you they're just jealous bitter people take no notice of them pick your pencil up watch other people's video watch other artists just try your best and above all my number one advice to you as I've already said is slow down take your time work on your patience and you will improve and I hope I can too even more so thanks to everybody for watching if you watch to the end that's great Thanks for watching my videos, uh, thanks for subscribing and I hope to see you all again real soon. Thank you.